So here's where things get a little bit thorny. If you're following along on the tutorial at uh, neurorad.link slash skull, we're at step five where we are going to create dowels for the skull. So again, our whole goal is to create a model similar to this where you have uh, dowels that fit into holes and allow the skull to snap together. So in this step, we're going to take the skull that we cut and we're going to create dowels for it. And if you're following along on the website, uh, this highlights some major steps along the way. So, again, we go to uh, neurorad.link slash skull files, and that's a link to a Google, Google Drive account that has all the different files for this project. And if you go into step five, create dowels for skull, you can see there's two files here. There's the to do, create dowels, that's the one you're going to work in, and then there's the completed one that's going to have all the dowels already created and the step finished. So I'm going to work in the completed one, but you want to open up the to-do file and follow along with me. Alright, so we pick up where we left off in the last step where we have done a plain cut and created kind of a skull cap and a skull base. My object browser is already open. I'm going to hide my skull base by clicking on this eye in the object browser, and now I just have my skull cap. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to uh, create the first cylinder. Okay, so we have the skull cap selected. I'm going to click the Mesh Mix button, and you can see there's a lot of primitive objects that we can drag into our model. This is our cylinder here, so I'm going to drag this in. And I've noticed some inconsistency with dragging tools in. Sometimes you get the transform interface, and sometimes you get a different interface that uh, prompts you to drop an object. Um, I'm not sure what drives which, which uh, menu pops up, but right now we got the transform, and it's not a big deal either way. So you can see you have size X, Y, and Z. Again, red, green, and blue is X, Y, and Z. So I want to make a four millimeter cylinder, okay? So you can see that the green is the length of the cylinder. So red, green, blue, the y-axis is the length. So X and Z are going to be the diameter. So we want it to be four millimeters by four millimeters. And then let's make it 1.5 centimeters long, all right? So there it is. Got a cylinder that's four millimeters by four millimeters. So four millimeter diameter by 1.5 centimeters long. Now, the next step is to get this cylinder aligned with the skull. And we want it to be perfectly flush with this surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the align tool. And that's in the edit menu under align. Now, this tool can be a little bit tricky. You can see I click the align and all of a sudden the uh, you, you have a transparent cylinder here, a non-transparent cylinder here, and then you have the skull. And it can be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to walk you through it. So you can see you have a source, a destination, and a transformation. So starting with the source, that is what we're moving. So we're going to be moving the cylinder to the skull cap. And there is a lot of different options for what you define as your source. And in this case, we basically want to align the end of the cylinder to the plane of the skull cap. So our source is going to be a surface point. That's what it defaulted to because that's what I've been playing with. Now you define the source by clicking on the transparent object, not the solid object. That tripped me up for quite a while. So if you left click there, you can see that it realigns your surface point to be right there. So we've realigned our surface point. Now our destination is going to be another surface point. And you can see here that they, they actually do prompt you to shift click for your destination point. Now we're going to make this our anterior cylinder, so I'm going to get it in the neighborhood. Now finally for the transformation you can see translate only or translate and rotate. Now I actually do want it to rotate the cylinder so that it's perfectly aligned with the skull cap. Okay, so there it is, perfectly flush and aligned. I'm going to accept that. And that's a good start. 
So now we have it perfectly lined up. The next step is we want to figure out how deep to sink the cylinder into the skull cap. Now we basically want it to be, you know, halfway in the skull cap, halfway in the skull base. So I'm just going to approximate that. You might also think that the cylinder is a little bit too long. So we can do a transform on it actually, and we can make it just a centimeter big. Let's do that. All right, now let's do a transform and let's drag it into the skull. Now, it's important here since we aligned it, your transform should be in the local frame, not the world frame. The world frame is going to align your cylinder to this world plane, which the skull cap is out of plane with that. So we want to be dragging it perpendicular to the skull cap in the local frame. All right, now if we drag it up, you can see that it sinks into the skull cap like that. And we'll pan around a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's accept that transform. Now, I'm going to rename this to be anterior because it's our anterior dowel. And at this point, we're going to make some copies so that we have more dowels. So I'm going to make three copies of this. And we're going to have a dowel in the posterior part of our model, in the right part of our model, and in the left part of our model. And then we're going to drag them into place. So the posterior dowel, we're going to transform and we're going to bring it to the back of the skull. Now, this is important. Do not adjust the green axis. Don't move it in or out of the plane of the skull cap because we want them all to be at the same depth. And that's why I made copies of the cylinders once I'd gotten a position where I wanted in the anterior portion of the skull. But you can move it in the blue and red plane as much as you want to get it lined up the way you want. So I I like that. Okay, so I'll accept that. Now I'm going to move the right dowel into place on the right. Now you'll notice it's a little bit thick for that portion of the skull, so I'm going to move it into a little more posterior part of the skull that's a little thicker. Like that accept that. And then I'm going to put the left dowel on the other side in about the same location. You can see they're, they're a little bit lopsided. You know, there's more dowels posteriorly than anteriorly, but that's okay. All right. And accept that too. All right, so now we have dowels in the positions that we want them. So we're going to be doing a Boolean subtraction to subtract those dowels from the skull cap to make holes. We're also going to subtract them from the skull base, so we need to make copies of each one of them. We've got an anterior copy, a posterior copy, a right copy, and a left copy. And then I'm going to make one more copy so that we just have a copy of the dowel that we used so that we can print it. I'm going to call that the dowel. And let's go ahead and hide all of our copies for now. Otherwise it'll be confusing once we do our Boolean subtractions. So at this point we're gonna do Boolean subtractions to take the dowels away from the skull caps and that's gonna be in step six. So we are finished with this step.